from the Chicago Sun-Times newsroom, I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show. Joining me this week is Marianne Ahern, political reporter for NBC5. Thank you. Editorial writer Kate Grossman, and data specialist and investigative reporter Art Golab. This week we're going to preview something that's coming up this weekend. We're going to explore a little bit the Rahm Emanuel and Bruce Browner relationship. Art, why don't we start out with you? You did some of the data analysis on this story. When you look at the donations in Rahm Emanuel's campaign fund and Bruce Browner's campaign fund, where's their overlap? What, what were you seeing when you compared the two? Well, out of the thousands of donations each one has received, uh, there were close to 100 donors in common. It turned out to be some of the richest people in this town. The Bucksbound family who owned shopping centers, uh, the Crown family who owned a, a lot of stuff. These are people in the billionaire class, uh, Joe Mansueto of Morningstar, Richard Dennis, the former commodities trader. So all of these people had really, really big bucks uh, and they do business here in Chicago. The other thing they have in common is uh, Rahm and Rauner. They like both of them. So what does that mean? Why do you think we're seeing an overlap with the very wealthy between a, a Democrat and a Republican in this case? Um, first of all, I think it's not surprising at all. I see them as two sides of the same coin. You know, one happens to be a Republican, one happens to be a Democrat, and I'm not saying they're the same. They do swing, you know, in the left and right direction, but they're very similar, sort of. How are they similar? They're similar in that, well, first of all, they both have a finance background. They're both sort of, I'm a business guy, reformer, you know, sort of a technocratic, pragmatic approach to governing. In some ways, less ideological and more about I can get stuff done. And on some of the financial issues, Rauner certainly is more conservative. But Emanuel has been very supportive of pension reform, which is otherwise known as cutting pensions. They're really pretty closely aligned on that. They do share similar philosophies about schools are both big charter advocates, particularly Rauner. I mean, I don't mean to suggest they're exactly the same, but you know, when you really parse the issues, they're not that far apart. If you want to get a rise out of Rauner, call him Romner. <laughs> because <laughs> you will see the veins, you know, kind of start like this. It's about the only time I've seen it because he is very controlled. He's been prepped well to speak to the media um, as far as a brand new novice candidate, comparing perhaps to Andy McKenna, who had a tough time kind of getting his message out, wasn't as adept at talking to the press. Rauner has it down, you know, can do it. But you're right. In a way, it's surprising how much money, you know, that they have together when they're on opposite sides of political parties. But really, they, you know, they're old buddies. They vacation together. Right. He's been to his Montana home, Rom has. Rom has, you know, gotten up and spoken on his behalf when he's won awards. And no doubt, uh, Rom has given him some, you know, political advice of how to run a campaign. So why hasn't this put him in more of a vulnerable position in, during this GOP primary? I mean, Republicans do not like Rahm Emanuel. I mean, I think the bigger context is that Rauner has invested so much of his own money in the campaign. You know, you could poke at him on this ROM issue, but you know, when you're 25 points ahead in the polls, I just don't think it's going to make enough of a difference. And I also, I think that, you know, a lot of people like Emmanuel, Republicans too. So I don't think it's an issue that you're going to get a, a lot of traction on. Well, Art, one of the things that we will be able to do is more easily search on our website. The databases, can you explain that? Well, this data that I got for the round, uh, rounder comparison came from the state of Illinois. I've transferred essentially all of the data on the uh, Illinois Elections Board database to our own database that is uh, that you can search by your own neighborhood. You'll be able to type in your zip code and see who your neighbors are donating to. You'll be able to type in the name of a recipient or a donor and see everything that they've done. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty good. Can't wait to use it. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's shift gears a little bit here. Um, there was another um, interesting political story this week. <laughs> after this video emerged of Alderman Jason Irvin and the bachelor party where there were strippers. At what point did it become too much to ignore? It was where it was held. I mean, it was either, if it wasn't in his ward office, it was adjacent to, it was like steps away. Mm -hmm. So that was the problem. And then he released a statement about it. So it sort of begged everyone to say, oh, okay, you want to talk about it? Let's, we'll talk about it. It did happen a couple of years ago, but you know, if you're a city official and you're having strippers in your office or next door to your office, that's a question. I mean, and, and yet he doesn't want to answer anything about it. We waited for him outside of City Hall yesterday for several hours oh, wow. and just happened, walked around the corner, found him trying to escape the side stairway and, you know, chased him down the stairway. <laughs> and I've given my message, you know, I've said, my, I said, well, you're gonna have to say it again. No, 
No, I'm not. I'm not. I already, I already released my statement. He thinks it's over. There's some talk of maybe there were others there, perhaps other city officials there. We'll see. I mean, I think they're, I don't think this is going away necessarily quite that quickly. So he thinks it's over. You think it's you over? Know, I, I actually think it probably is over in the sense that the big issue was where was it held? And he says it was in this. I mean, can you think of a worse place to have a bachelor no, party than your alderman? Really, really dumb. Um, but I mean, in terms of the public arena, this is kind of gross and titillating and it's like an interesting story, but just really embarrassing. And, you know, I watched the video and I'm grossed out. You know? <laughs> well, do you think there'd be, there's going to be Snickers that, you know, continue? At the, the very the least, you, you have to question a guy's judgment. It's not so much the fact that he did this. It, it's the fact that he was an alderman and, you know, he didn't worry about what could happen. What are the consequences of doing something like he this? He forgot about iPhones and we could talk about that for a while, but let's move on to quotes of the week. Why don't we start with you, Marianne? All right. Well, I was in Washington this week when they made the announcement for this new digital app. Oh, okay. So we're in the White House and, of course, you know, everyone, we've loved to get to talk to the president, which hasn't happened <laughs> since 2009 has he spoken to a Chicago reporter. As he introduces the mayor, he said, we've got somebody who is responsible for trimming my trees, shoveling snow, and filling potholes. I haven't been back in some time. I assume he's handling his business. Uh, and I thought, you know, there's a couple of ways of looking at that. You know, uh, number one, will the president really come back to Chicago when uh, his presidency is over? And number two, maybe he's forgotten that should the election for Rom be this year instead of next year, I think this whole pothole mess might be more of an issue. I think we should investigate his street and see if his And find out fixed. if those potholes are filled. Yeah, Kate. Uh, well, believe it or not, I have a pothole quote, too. <laughs> <laughs> the claims for damage to cars is the highest it's been in years. Talking about it, the city clerk, Susanna Mendoza, says, it almost feels like you're in Beirut with all these potholes. <laughs> and I sort of have to agree with her. It's, uh, yeah. it's pretty bad out there. Not the first time Chicago has been compared to Beirut. <laughs> Kim Jansen, our federal court reporter, is an invaluable source of interesting quotes. Uh, um, one of them came from a bank robber who escaped. You, we all remember the in, image of the hole in the Metropolitan Correctional Center and the sheet hanging down. Well, they caught that guy and he was sentenced to three extra years on top of his initial 20-year sentence. And he told the judge, you can take it and stick it up your blankety blank. The judge said, thank you, <laughs> and declined to increase his sentence even further, which I thought was very nice of that judge. Now he's the, the big man behind bars, right? Um, mine comes from the great work that Chris Fusco, Frank Main, and Tony Arnold did on all this DCFS uh, director controversy, and they interviewed um, the daughter of Arthur Bishop, who said, quote, he's supposed to be protecting the kids of the state, and you've got a kid out here you never done anything for. Hours after that posted, he ended up resigning. Well, with that, thank you very much for joining us on Off Message, and we will see you next week.